popular Razor Shines is? Oh, yeah, and, and why not? He's such a great guy. We had him on our uh, Sunday night sports show, Sports Nuts, a few weeks ago. Came in on a night when they had played a game the weekend that he managed in place of Mark Bombard. He won a game, stayed around, came in late on our show, and was a great guest. So, yeah, Razor deserves all the applause and everything he gets here in Indianapolis. What a great guy. He's got that big hand from the crowd. He takes a strike. Ninth year with the Indians. Ball one, one and one, and it's interesting. The ovations, the hands that he gets here. This is a triple A team. You've got the Pacers and the Colts, but I don't see athletes from either of those teams enjoying the popularity that Razor has with the Indians. I think you're right. In fact, strangely enough, I knew who Razor Shines was before I came here to Indianapolis. I don't remember how, but I know I, I had heard the name before. He got some time in the big leagues with Montreal. Right. 83, 84, 85, and 87. What they did his first game in the major leagues, they put him in left field, replacing Tim Raines. Oh. So they said, well, in left field, it's either Raines or Shines. Uh. Up the middle, the shortstop, Rody makes a fine play and throws Razor out. That is just an incredibly tough play to make, and he just, not just to stop the ball, but to turn and wheel and fire and get Shines at first. And there's one away, Rody to Mormon. And now Dan Wilson, who grounded to shortstop his first time up. One of the great things about the game of baseball is you never know what kind of game you're going to see. And the way this one started in the opening inning, the Bisons got three in the top of the first. The Indians had the bases loaded, no one out in the bottom of the inning. We thought we might see an 11 to 10 game. I was listening the pitchers to this, have settled down. Sorry, I was listening to this game driving in. I thought it was going to be uh, quite a barn burner. That's a strike. Here's the replay. Razor swinging at a high pitch, grounding it up the middle past Robertson. And watch the shortstop, Rody, with a good range to his left, whirl and throw. And there's another one to Rody off the bat of Wilson, and Rody throws him out as well. That was a little easier. He still showed some nice range. He's been very busy. He's got four assists and two putouts already, and we're in the bottom of the fourth. Now, Ken Anderson, who grounded a shortstop, back in the second. Tell us about your typical day, Ken, at Channel 6. Well, this, the last three weeks has been anything but typical. It's been get up uh, every morning and make that long drive up to Anderson to Colts camp and uh, stay there all day for two practices. That's up the middle. It got Robertson. It's a base hit to center field for Anderson. Stay up there, do a couple of live reports on the early news, and then, if I'm lucky, get to come out to a baseball game and sit next to a broadcasting legend such as yourself. Well, that's very nice of you to say. Here's Cesar Hernandez. You can really see the rain coming down now. Yeah, it's picked up in intensity. It is not an official game as yet. We must have five to have an official game, four and a half, if the home club is ahead. I said when I was driving in listening to it, and I know you started late, but the rain I came through coming from Anderson, I didn't think this thing would ever get in. Hernandez singled to the left and scored his first time up. He dribbles it foul on the right side for strike one, 0-1. Oh so you're spending most of your time this time of the year at Colts camp. Right. They're, after three weeks, uh, they, they can't wait to hit somebody else. They're going to hit Seattle on uh, Saturday night. I'll tell you what, after three weeks up there, I'm ready to hit somebody. Base hit to left field for Hernandez. Anderson stops at second, so that'll bring up Robinson, who had an RBI double to left in the second. Well, in the second inning, Rich Robertson got the first two Indians. Hernandez singled, Robinson doubled him home. He got the first two here in the fourth, and Anderson and Hernandez have singled. And what's the latest as far as Jeff George is concerned? He's up to $80,000 in fines, so they've almost paid for the salary for the entire year of one of their rookies, another five days, and they'll do that. And uh, I know as of Saturday night he was in town, but has not made his presence felt or known or anything. Ball one, do you think they will adhere to his wishes and trade him? I don't think so. Uh, not from what uh, Bob Ursay was saying. He would want five million cash, two number one picks, and two number two picks. Uh, I think that's going to be a stiff price to pay if they decide to really hold a team to that. Hit in the air to center field. Penny Feathers there, and this should end the inning, and it does. No runs, two hits, and two left, and we played four. It's the Bisons three in the Tribe two.
by 1995, over 2,000 new aviation mechanics will be needed in Indianapolis. If you want to be one of them, if you want to compete, now is the time to get the training. Vincennes University's Aviation Maintenance Technology Center is here to serve you. In as little as 24 months, you can enter the field of aviation with an associate in science degree and take the FAA airframe and power plant exam to become a licensed aircraft mechanic. Day and evening classes are available along with financial aid and scholarships for qualified students. All credits are transferable to the major universities, including Purdue. Vincennes University's Aviation Maintenance Technology Center in Indianapolis also offers training for commercial fixed wing and rotary aircraft. Join us at the nation's largest aviation school by calling 247-6245 or out of town 1-800-742-9198. On we go to the fifth inning, and pitcher Rich Robertson will lead off against Scott Robinson. Buffalo leading 3-2. to two. Ken Tomash is our guest. You know we're talking about Jeff George. For once, I would like to see a team just stick to its guns and make the player pay the price and not give in to the player's demands. I think a lot of people would like to see that. That's what the Saints did with Bobby Hebert after Hebert said he would never play another down of football for the Saints, sat out a whole year, came back and not only played but started most of last year. Then he went free agent and now is with the Atlanta Falcons. But yeah, I think a lot of folks would uh, at least like to see a, little, a hard line by the Ursays who got... Uh, Pretty much gave in, I guess, to Eric Dickerson, if you could call it that. They put up with a lot of stuff from him for many years. Absolutely. He helped the Colts. Dickerson sure. did in 87 sure. and 88 his first couple of years, but then the problems began. Now Rich Robertson, who fly to center, and we all know about Jeff George's tools and his talent, but when you scout a man, you have to look at his personality. Strike one call, and I really feel, had he played well this year, he would have won the fans over. For sure. I think the fans here are willing to give him the, the benefit of the doubt uh, for quite a while. Swing and a miss, strike two. And yes, they may have booed him some, but I don't think they were particularly tough on him. No, I, don't, I, don't, I think you're right. Jeff sometimes takes things a little too hard, I think, but that's a tough position to be in. That is just foul. Playing in your hometown. This uh, can make things kind of nice in some respects and can make things awful hard in a lot of other respects. It depends upon how you handle it. Now, how they will list this guy at 175 pounds, but if it got any more windier, I swear he's going to blow over. You know, the story many years ago was before you were born, but Stu Miller in the All-Star game he in 1961 was blown off the mound in Candlestick Park. This guy could be the next one if the wind kicks up. If he turns sideways and sticks out his tongue, you look like a zipper. Fouled off left side and out of play, and it holds at 0-2. But at least in this rain, he's not going to get too wet. Steady rain. We're in the top of the fifth. Bison's leading 3-2. Ball one, one and two. Will Pennyfeather on deck and Mitre Cummings to follow? Razor shines going too far for that ball. It was right to the second baseman. The ball would have been a routine play, and Razor, upset with himself, he went too far for it. He's trying to do a little too much. You're right, Howard. That ball was tailor-made for Naboa, 4-3, but Razor thought he could get to it. Maybe uh, his eyes a little bit bigger than what he could actually do. Now, again, we don't know what's being said on the field, but usually your second baseman will call off right. the first baseman. Roberts is going to take the jacket. That is the first error of the ball game. And now Will Pennyfeather is grounded out and struck out. Razor and Naboa played together in 1989 with the Indians at championship season. 
We're going to hear from Junior Naboa after the sixth inning. Deep to left field. Costa is way back. A home run. A home run for Will Pennyfeather. Two run homer. And the Bisons now lead five to two. Penny Feathers ninth of the year, and he really just crushed that one. Costo at first started back like he like it was gonna stay in the park, but then when he gave up on it, you know it was gone over that wall and left. As you said, his ninth of the year, he also had a two-run homer in the second game last night. Now Mitre Cummings has singled to right and scored and popped a shortstop, and now it's raining more heavily. That's a strike. Ball one, one and one. You'd have to think Penny Feather would not be the one guy who'd be voting for a new ballpark here. Here it is again. See Anderson Co pointing up. There's Costo. Now he realizes he doesn't have a play. Nobody has a play on that one. Some guy out there in a white van, maybe. Two balls and a strike. Fouled off left side and out of play. Two and two. You talk about nobody having a play and no defense. One time during a team meeting, Casey Stengel was managing the Mets and Roger Craig was pitching on a particular day and they were discussing Willie McCovey who is Hall of Famer with the Giants. There's a grounder to third. Willie Green in and up with it. Got a hurry. Did not get him. That'll be an infield hit. And Cummings is aboard. So three men have come to the plate and all have reached base safely. And now Dave Rohde, who's doubled to right and scored and lined to first. Anyway, they got around to Willie McCovey and Casey Stengel said to Roger Craig, where would, you like, where would you like your right fielder to play McCovey? In the lower deck or the upper deck? That's confidence from a manager. See the rain. See it on your screen as we have the center field shot. I don't think you would have started the game in this rain, but once you're underway, you're not going to stop unless it rains much more heavily than this. That's a ball. 1-0. This is the Bison's fourth and final visit to Indianapolis this season. Throw over, not in time. Have you seen the San Diego chicken before? Ever oh, yes. No, last year, I uh, did a live shot with him from this ballpark, in fact. Yeah, chicken's a great, uh, great guy. Well, that's great, because he'll be here tomorrow. That's a ball outside, 2-0. He likes coming here. He comes here for a lot of things. He comes here for the ice. He comes here for the Pacers. Loves to come here to this ballpark. First time we brought him here was in 1981. And at that time, there was a strike in the major leagues. And the pitch is low. He had a beautiful night. And of course, there was no major league baseball due to the strike. We had 10,000 people out here to see him. Didn't he say recently he hopes to go into the Hall of Fame one day and they have a player's wing and the broadcaster's wing and he wants to have the chicken wing? It's very witty on his part. Yes, I did hear that line. And Robinson walks Rody on four pitches. Well, Robinson Scott had pitched well in the second, third, right. fourth. He had really settled down after that first inning. It seemed like as soon as the, the weather changed, it seemed like his fortunes changed as well. He gave up the long home run to Pennyfeather and now a, a hit, an infield hit and a walk. Dan Wilson goes out to talk to Scott Robinson. Now Andy Tomberlin, who knocked in a run with a hit to right and later scored and fan. Two on, no one out, and two runs in. Buffalo leading 5-2 to two as we play ball in the visiting half of the fifth inning. Ken Tomash of Channel 6 is our guest. After training camp concludes with the Colts, what will your typical day be like then? Mm, well, it'll be mostly, we'll still be covering them and uh, high school football going on, college football on Saturdays, be covering the Colts on Sundays, 
Fouled off and out of play. During the week, of course, and other local things that go on until Pacers start training camp in October. The average day usually I work during the day, go out and uh, cover things in the in the day to the afternoon. I'm usually home at night with my uh, wife and young son, which is which is pretty nice. My last job I was working nights for about four years, so it's a nice change. Strike two call. 0 oh and two. Do you have a preference in terms of covering basketball or football or baseball, which you enjoy most? Well, there's nothing better than, really, honestly, than sitting in a booth uh, doing a baseball game. I haven't had an opportunity to do too much of that, but uh, and I love football. Uh, can't help but come to Indiana and get uh, taken over by basketball as well. Made a journey to the wigwam over the, over the winter to see Anderson play. That was an experience. That's a ball high and away. I've telecast some basketball games up there, and you're exactly right. It is really a pleasure to go up there. And hockey. I didn't. We don't get much hockey in Florida. We do now because we have a couple of teams. But uh, when I came here, got to cover two games of the Stanley Cup Finals uh, two summers ago. So that really turned me on to hockey, and I love going out and cover the ice. Swing and a miss. Robinson really has to throw strikes here if he's going to get out of the inning. Now he set himself up. He can get out of the inning with a double play and only the two-run homer having scored against him. One out, Tomberlin fans, and now Russ Mormon is walked and fly to left. How have you found dealing with the athletes? Oh, they're great. Uh, the Pacers are great. The Colts have been really have been really nice. Uh, all the, the ice guys are great. All the Indians I've ever talked to have been really nice. So, yeah, all in all, the athletes here. Luckily, I came right after Eric Dickerson got traded, so I've <laughs> missed that experience. Right field. Kremlis on the move. It's a foul ball, and he won't get it. No balls and a strike. Well, Ken, you just mentioned the Colts, the Pacers, the Indians, and the Ice. The Indians players and the Ice players are not highly paid for the most part, where the Colts and the Pacers players do make a great deal of money. Right. Is that mean is there any difference in terms of dealing with it? No, well, I have found, uh, for the most part, that the lower you go on the salary scale, usually the nicer guys, the guys are. It's not to say that uh, there aren't nice rich guys because there are on both the, the Colts and the Pacers and, and there are I'm sure some guys who don't make much money who are jerks but for the most part yeah you'll find that the less important a guy is perceived to be or his sport or his team is perceived to be usually the easier it is to deal with because they're just more happy to have the coverage in the air to center field Cesar Hernandez is there and he has it he's had a busy night two down that's his fifth put out of the evening. And now Jerry Goff, who has walked twice, once with the bases loaded and once leading off an inning. This guy's got to be your out man if you're Scott Robinson. So, so far he hasn't had much success against him. But Bombie's been going to leave him out there. If he gets out of the inning, Bombie will look like a genius. Five, five, and oh for Buffalo, two, seven, and one for the Indians. Foul ball, strike one, oh and one. Well, I was told by many people that when you were dealing with the professional athletes at the major league levels, you're going to find some who are not as cooperative who feel they don't need the media as much because of all the money that they make. Oh, Major League Baseball, definitely. I mean, I get to deal with them in, sp in spring training, which you'd think would be a much more relaxing time down in Florida for many years. And uh, most Major League Baseball players, many of them, I won't say most, but many of them have exactly that attitude. Very tough to deal with. Right back to Robinson. Oh, and he almost threw it away onto Razor Shines to retire the side. Had to make things interesting, but he did pitch out of a jam after getting the first two guys on. Two runs on two hits, a costly error. And a couple left, and we've played four and a half, Buffalo five, Indianapolis two. Okay, Johnny, let it and you look at a couple of Indians there, Frank Kremlis and Junior Neboa, as we go to the bottom half of the fifth inning. Buffalo leading 5-2. to two. Frank Kremlis is 1-2. for two. Single to center and scored and struck out. His father, Ken, was a quarterback at Ohio State. Took him to the Rose Bowl, 1958. And Growing up in Columbus, Ohio, he ends up signing a contract with his favorite team growing up, the Cincinnati Reds. Cincinnati's produced so many players. Of course, Frank is from Columbus. 
That's a ball one and oh. Center field and Will Pennyfeather is there and there's one away. Now Junior Naboa who has two singles to right field. Bisons are leading five to two. So unlike many people in the TV sports casting business, your day's work is done in the daytime. For the most part, yeah. Fortunate that way. Not done at 1126 or thereabouts. I did that job for quite a while. That gets old. Fouled off left side, pass Mark Bombard, who wisely doesn't even try for that one. And not after the last one. Stipping his cap up here, acknowledging it. No pain, no gain, Mark. He just watches that one go by as well. No range at all on the Indians third base coach and skipper. That's it. Move a little bit to your right. This will be an 0-2 pitch. Way, way high. Ball one. That's a good 0-2 pitch. Gets the hitter thinking a little. 7,014 on hand tonight. Wide of third, bobbled and picked up by Leeper, and he got him. Leeper to Mormon, there are two away. Now Willie Green is walked and grounded into a double play. How much communication is involved with you and Ed Sorensen on a daily basis about what you'll cover? Oh, we'll talk. Uh, we'll talk quite a bit during the day, or he'll leave. You know, he's obviously he's got the job that he is uh, getting off work at 11:30 at night, and I'm anymore with a five-month-old son at home. I'm asleep by 10 or 10:30 if I can get there. So, uh, but I'm I, sure you tape the sports cast. I sure, so I can make sure I haven't missed anything, and I'll, I'll hear. Usually, when I go home at night, I have a pretty good idea what we're doing tomorrow. Ed'll tell me. Uh, will call me if something uh, shakes out that we need to get on, and uh, but for the most part, I have a. Uh, Pretty good idea from day to day, and then I touch base with him in the afternoon and go from there. Willie Green takes ball one and now ball two. He's walked and hit into a double play. Two outs and no one on, bottom of the fifth. Bison's leading five to two. Foul back and out of play. Now I believe Howard the Rain has pretty much stopped. Well, the weatherman's on in our corner tonight. At least it appears that way. Ball three, three and one. Swing and a miss. Well, they got a little anxious and the count is full. Tim Costo is the on-deck hitter. Check swing foul out of play near the VIP suite. People from Hooks and Pepsi enjoying themselves up there. Fouled off again, and it holds at three and two. Do you aspire to do some anchoring down the road someday? Oh, sure. I've uh, that was my last job was the was the main anchor in in Florida, and I have done some filling anchoring here, but uh, I like doing it all. I like reporting. I like anchoring. Now Tim Costo as Willie Green draws a walk. Tim has hit into a double play and popped up. Well, they say in television, the market in which you're working means everything in terms of market size. It means a lot as far as money goes. It's just like, uh, you know, different levels in baseball. The higher up you go, the, the more money there is. Boy, Costa really hasn't let all the position changes he's gone through this year affect his hitting at all. When you come in hitting 337 and had that monster night last night, I mean, he's been moved around more than an ugly piece of furniture, and he's just doing great. 
Tim is 0 for 2 tonight. That's a ball, 1 and 0. I think Tim knows when I'm in the ballpark and he doesn't do well. The last time I was out doing a story on him, and it was when he was in the midst of just a great hitting streak, and I think he went 0 for 3 with a couple of strikeouts and called me that later that afternoon, and I said, man, what happened? I came out to do a story on you today, and you went 0 for 3. He said, I know, I had my worst day of the year. That's the ball. Well, it's funny you mentioned that because I was talking to him before the game, and he said, remember the last time you interviewed me before a TV game? I didn't get any hits, so I don't know if I should do any more TV interviews. Well, we're both uh, bad luck to this guy. So we didn't interview him tonight. We talked to Naboa. And that's a ball, 3-0. and oh. But ball players can be very superstitious. Oh, you bet. I'll put the socks on the same way, or, or at worst, maybe not change the socks for a while if they're on a hitting streak. Three and zero oh on Costo. Willie Green at first. Two down. And that's a strike at the knees. The on deck hitter is Razor Shines. Foul back, and the count is full, and Willie will be off and moving. Bottom half of the fifth inning, the Bisons are leading five to two. And the first baseman, Mormon, will play behind Willie Green. Costa's only drawn 17 walks in the year. If this one's close, I figure he'd probably be hacking at it. Fouled it off, and it holds at three and two. Robertson doesn't want to walk him. That would enable the potential tying run to come to the plate. When you have a lead, you don't want to issue walks. Of course, you never really like to issue them, but when you're trailing, you'll pitch around people at times. But when you have a big lead and a potential tying runs not up, you want to be aggressive. Left center field and deep. Cummings to the scoreboard. Home run, Tim Pasto. Now, wait a minute. Are they saying two bases or a home run? I saw the umpire, Benny Walton, give the home run sign. I saw it too. That's what I was going for because I lost the ball in the scoreboard somewhere. I couldn't tell if it went over or if it went into one of the holes in the, in the scoreboard. Well, that's what they're saying. They're calling it a double, but Walton gave the home run sign. They say it went through one of the holes in the scoreboard. We'll get a replay of it. Here it is. Costa leans into it, drives it deep to left center. There it is right there, went right under the eye in the third column. Looked like the second window down. So that's that was a nice a piece of hit. You can't do that too easily. Here's Razor Shines. He's popped up and grounded out. And he takes a strike and a base hit here. Could bring in those two runs. Right. So it goes as a double for Costo. And Tim now owns a 12-game hitting streak. Outside a ball. The worst thing for the Indians, if that had been just a, a foot more to the right, it would have been off the scoreboard. The run would have scored. It'd be 5-3. Absolutely. They came out of that in bad shape. Two outs and Willie Green running with a count three and two. He would have scored easily if it was off the board. Grounded foul. One and two. It's time for Razor to be the hero then. Dan Wilson on deck. We're in the bottom of the fifth. The Bisons are leading five to two. He reaches for a pitch that was away, and it holds at one and two. And it's begun raining again. So now we have rain and shines. Okay. Glad you got that in, Ken. Appreciate it. I'll be here all week. Thank you.
This will be a one-two pitch. To the second baseman, Schreiber stays with it and throws to Mormon. Tough break for the Indians who do not score in the inning. They leave two in scoring position. We have played five. Buffalo five, Indianapolis two. Instruction-packed videos guaranteed to teach you the steps, step by step. You'll get down and boogie with everyone's favorite, the Tush Push. Do the hot new line dance from the hit song, Achy Breaky Heart. You'll learn the boxcar blues, the Elvira, the 10-step polka, boot scoot and boogie, and more. Order these two videos now and get this bonus video free for three times the fun. It's your best country dance and video value anywhere. Free for the price of one. So pick up the phone and call right now and start doing it country style. You get the picture. Call now. Farewell to order doing it country style. Receive three tapes for only $19.98. That's three tapes for only $19.98. For faster delivery, please have your credit card ready. Sorino CODs. Call 1-800-776-4949. That's 1-800-776-4949. Top half of the sixth inning, there is Dave, Tim Leeper. He'll lead off. He is knocked in a run with a sack fly, to, sack fly to center and fly to center. 0 for 1 officially with the RBI. And our guest is Ken Tomash, sportscaster of Channel 6. If some of our viewers want to tune in, Ed Sorensen, a little after 11 o'clock tonight. What story did you do? Today we talked to Anthony Johnson, the, uh, who was the Colts' offensive most viable player last year, a guy who can really do it all, and some say maybe he does a little too much. He's not only is a great runner, receiver, but they play him on a lot of special teams. He's, he doesn't leave the field too often and kind of wears him down. He said, he told me today that he thinks he could be a 1,000-yard kind of back, and they have the kind of line that could block for a 1,000-yarder, but he's just doing so many other things, and they have so many other good backs in rotation that it would be tough for him to get that 1,000. Hit in the air, foul right side, and out of play. No balls and a strike. That was always the big thing in football, rushing for a 1,000 yards. It used to mean a heck of a lot more, I think. But even when I was a kid, when I first started following football, it was the 14-game season. Right. And it meant a little, a little bit less, and now 16 games. And it seems like uh, just about anybody can get a 1,000 yards. Still a great accomplishment for a guy, though. Pulled on the ground foul outside of first. You're right. Until the season was expanded to 16 games, it was thought of very highly. Of course, when I first started watching football when I was young, they had the 12-game season. Right, and Jim Brown had like 1,800 yards in one of those 12-game seasons. He played nine years in the NFL and led the league in rushing eight times. Swing and a miss. So Leaper fans, and there's one away. He's the best running back, by the way, I ever have seen. And what an actor, too. <laughs> I believe you told me you were born in 65. <laughs> yes. That was the, the year you retired. Jim Brown's last year, right? That's he was right. the MVP in the league that year, too. He Here's Bruce it. Schreiber who's grounded out and fly to center. Quit at the top of his game. A lot of other guys should maybe take his advice. Of course, in those days, though, although he was well paid, they weren't making sure. astronomical oh, sure. amounts of money. If he was playing today, he'd play till he was 40. Foul ball to the right side and out of play. 0-1. One out, no one on, top of the sixth. Buffalo leading five to two. That's a ball, one and one. In the dirt, two balls and a strike. Did you have a hero in the sports broadcasting business growing up? No, not really. 
I remember you, when I first started watching and decided to, to get into this, I was watching Monday Night Football in the uh, late 70s when uh, Howard and Giffen were at it. A hard hit one hopper. Robinson to Shines, and there are two down. Well, that was quite an interesting crew. Now Rich Robertson, who has fly to center and reached on an error and scored. How old were you when you made up your mind you wanted to get into this business? Uh, 13, I think. It was around 1978, 77, 78. Robinson makes a nice play. Throws on to Shines. Three up and three down. We played five and a half. Buffalo five. The Tribe two. We go to the bottom of the sixth as you look at Rich Robertson taking his warm-up tosses. And on the Electronic Message Center, they wish a very happy anniversary to Kim and Denise Rogers, their 19th wedding anniversary tonight. Kim is the beat writer for the Indianapolis News. She's been covering the Indians for 13 years. And we wish them our very best. Kim was saying, Denise has put up with me for 19 years. Here's Dan Wilson, who's grounded to shortstop twice. And that's a strike. High ball one. One ball, one strike. Craig McMurtry now is warming up in the Buffalo Bison's bullpen. He was supposed to start tomorrow. But they've decided to move him into the bullpen. Here comes Penny Feather. He can't get it. A base hit. Wilson wisely stays at first. Had it been a one-run game, he might have tried it. But when you're down by three, you're not going to gamble. I think Penny Feather got a little bit of a late break on that ball. I think you're right, Ken. When the ball first went off the bat, I thought he'd catch it. Here comes pitching coach Tom DeTore. Now, is he out there to talk to Robertson or make the change? He makes the changes as well. Probably here he won't make a change. I don't think McMurtry's had quite enough time to warm up, do you? But he gives McMurtry some more time to do just that by going out there. Ken Anderson is grounded to short and single to center. He'll be the batter. Tom DeTore, the pitching coach, pitched in this league with Wichita. Had some time in the big leagues with the Chicago Cubs. Lee Prejean dusting off home plate. The single by Wilson is the Indians ninth hit of the game. They've out hit the Bisons nine to five, yet they're trailing five to two. Ball one. One ball, no strikes. So Robertson deserves credit for making some big pitches. The Bisons have turned over a couple of double plays. You ever do any play-by-play? -play? Sure, a little bit. I've done the, some baseball in college and some basketball and some high school football. The pitch is low for a ball. A little tennis. I haven't been in a booth in quite a while. Not at a baseball game. It's been a lot of fun. Some people enjoy play-by-play -play more. Other people enjoy station sports casting more. No, I'd love to do this for a living, but... That could be two. Rudy to Schreiber. There's one. On to Mormon, and they have another double play. Six, four, three. The third DP the Bisons have turned over in the game. That has helped, and then getting lucky on Costo's ball last inning helped as well. Folks, with two outs, you can't see this at home, but I have to have a picture of this, Howard, of this momentous night in my career. Thank you. Okay, here's Cesar Hernandez, who is single I'll to send, left and scored and single to left. I'll send you a copy. If I'd known you were going to take that, I would have taken my glasses well, now off. Now you can't see, so it's going to be a fun couple innings for you as soon as I leave. Ball one, one and oh. David Lynch warming up in the Indians' bullpen.
That's a strike, one and one. Fouled off to the right side and out of play. One ball, two strikes on Cesar Hernandez. Has two singles to left. And he fouls that one back and it holds in one and two. Bison's five, tribe two, bottom of the sixth. Low and inside on the breaking ball, two and two. back it's close to the visiting broadcast booth Pete Weber the radio voice of the Buffalo Bisons broadcasting the game back to Buffalo to the shortstop and I mean Rodies has a busy night and he just did get him Rody to Mormon and that'll do it no runs a hit no one left Ken Tomash it's been a pleasure having you in the booth. We thank you very kindly. It's been fun. Thank you for having me. I'm sorry I couldn't get the tribe some more runs. We'll see you all down the road. Bye-bye. We have played six, the Bison's five, and the Indians two.